Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed Radwan. I'm a developer technologies MVP and principal DevOps. So this is the first video in our series about um, Azure and web app infrastructure as code and many other components or resources. So first is to understand and have an introduction about infrastructure as code and ARM or Azure Resource Manager. And when I'm usually talking about infrastructure as code, I mean both infrastructure and configuration. So let's just start by giving an overview about infrastructure and configuration as code. As usually, I, I describe the problem and then the solution, but in this case, I prefer to describe the solutions or why I need infrastructure as a code uh, before we going to talk about the problem. So infrastructure and configuration is good. The main idea is to transform all my infrastructure and configuration into files, into uh, text files, and this text file will be under source control as a part of my source code uh, with my uh, the code for my application or my solutions. And the ability to create or update or recreate my environment based on this text which defines the infrastructure and the configuration. There is a very important principle in infrastructure as code which is uh, idempotence uh, or idempotency which is the ability to recreate the same process will give us the same result no matter what I recreate them. So this is the main idea of infrastructure and configuration as code. So how we are going to achieve this result? So in order to achieve that or to work with infrastructure as a code, we're using what we call the ARM or Azure Resource Manager. So what is Azure Resource Manager? Azure Resource Manager gives us the ability to manage uh, our resources in a group. So it gives us the ability to deploy, create, update, delete or recreate our resources in groups. So, and we usually using a template or ARM template where we can define the resources in, 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 in this, which will be in exist in, in the resource group. So for example, if we look at this, we can see that we have a three tier template, which include uh, SQL database and app service and virtual machine. And, when we look at the JSON file, because this template is declarative, uh, which means that it just declare exactly what is the component inside, what is the resources for uh, these resource groups, over. and it manages the dependencies between the resources, it manages the types, the location, so it has all the definitions. And part of the template, we have the template, which is include all the resources, and the, the, the settings of the resources, the configuration of the resources. And also we have an, a parameter usually with a template, which including all the parameters that we can use for uh, the army template. So this is in, in um, um, as an overview about army templates. So let's just start from the beginning uh, about the problem. So when we look at we, we usually have our resources as a single tone. So like we have our website, we have uh, maybe storage, we, maybe database, virtual machines, so different resources that we want to manage separately. And we, we, we want to uh, have, you know, manage permission, monitoring. So, and we want to, you know, having this management over these resources. Um, so when we look at the resource group, it's the ability to group many resources inside one container, which has all of that. This is why the, the resource must exist in one and only one resource group. And that the resource group can span regions. So, so if I look at the resource group, we can see that I can put many resources in one resource group, or I can put one resource in different resource groups. So which one I would like to use, it's all the time based on the life cycle and the management of the resource group. So 
we need to ask ourselves, what is the life cycle of the resource group and how I want to manage? Because it's all the time based, for example, if I want to give permission for this resource group, for more permission for this resource group, uh, for, for um, certain teams or specific teams, then I, I might want to uh, put the, resor the resources in two different resource groups. So sometimes based on the permission, sometimes based on the life cycle. So it's all the time up to us. So when I look at infrastructure and configuration as a code, the main idea is, again, as I explained, our infrastructure and our configuration will be under, uh, will be text file, will be code under source control. And once I deploy that and execute that by automation engine, which usually is a build, this will create the different environments, either the dev, the stage, or production environments. So when I look at the deployment template or ARM, as we explain, so as we explain why I need that or what, it's a source of file checked in under source control. It has all the dependencies, so I don't need to worry about the workflow of creating uh, these files. For example, if I need a virtual machine, I need the, the, the network first. Uh, so, but because the ARM defines the dependencies, then it is a declarative uh, JSON file. Uh, it has parameterized input and output. Why? Ensure idempotency, which is, again, is the ability to recreate uh, the same result from the process. Once I recreate it, it is all, all the time give us the same result. So simplify orchestration for the entire uh, infrastructure and provide cross-resource configuration and update support. Um, so when we look at the gallery, we have many resources. When we look at Azure resources, we have many resources. And we usually, by time, Microsoft provide, you know, new resources and resource type uh, by, you know, by providing more services for Azure and cloud services. One of the benefit of using ARM uh, and resource uh, group is that it's role-based access control. So for example, I can give this resource group is, uh, it has admin, it has contributor, it has readers. So we can manage authentication and authorization uh, for this resource group. We're using Azure Active Directory and we manage the uh, full based uh, authorization on the resource group. We can also use tags. So when I have a resource group where it has hundreds of resources, uh, and usually I, I, I have many resource groups, and you know, it's very difficult to, to, you know, to, to manage all these resources, then I, I can simply put tags so I can, you know, search by tags and this will display all the resources with these tags. Um, look at the community. I found uh, some people and one of the fellow MVP here commented that, you know, uh, instead of using ARM, but using uh, Azure CLI, because the main idea with the challenges of maintaining an ARM, you know, by time, the ARM template become, you know, challenging to maintain a little bit because it's increasing the content and it's more dis descriptive. And he, he make a comparison between, you know, like, you know, this is the template for these resources and he make like a couple of lines with Azure resource, uh, with Azure CLI, and he prefer to use Azure CLI for maintaining the infrastructure as a code instead of using ARM. And he has a great blog post, um, uh, you know, describing the pros and cons of each one. And you will find this uh, blog post as a link part of the video. So this is an overview of ARM and Azure Resource Manager infrastructure as a code and configuration as a code. And in the next video, we are going to see, <coughs> in the next videos, we are going to see more demonstration about using infrastructure as code and some of the resources like web app, um, um, some database, and many, many others with Azure DevOps and build automation. At the end, I would like to thank you for watching the video. Please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me on my blog, muhammadradwan.com. Also, you, you can visit my blog with the link that will appear at the end of the video or uh, click on the related video, which usually is part of 
this series um, or uh, give you more information about the same topic. Thank you.